Hello, thank you for coming back. I'm going to continue on having a heart after God. Amen. Now, I'm going to read Psalms uh, 42 and verse 1. As a deer longs for the water, running water, so my whole being longs for thee, O Lord. My soul is dry for need of God, the living God. When shall I enter in and see the face of God? You know, you should desire God that much. You know, Psalm 73, verse 25 says, Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. You know, the Bible said, Delight thyself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of thine heart. Psalms 119, verse 97 says, Oh, how I love thy law. Oh, how I love thy law. I love thy word. It is my meditation all the days. You know, um, there's a lot of people, they have a um, lukewarm heart. What does it mean to be lukewarm? It means, well, half-hearted. Do not have a strong persuasion or belief or the state of being convinced they, they don't have no certainty. They look warm. They have, I don't, I don't care attitude. What would be, will be. You know, Jesus is coming again, but I've heard that when I was a little kid. They have that just attitude. They look warm. Uh, lukewarm have no excitement. They're no excited. Are you excited now when you still go to church when the word is being preached? Do you still get excited? Do you still get excited when it's time for praise and worship? Could it be you're not hot like it used to be? To call to activity, they don't have an excitement to call to activity, to rouse, to an emotional response. You know, there in Revelation, the third chapter, verse 16, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You know, God wants you to be hot for him. Judge yourself. Is God first place in your life? Is he still number one in your life? You know, everything is, is built on love. Marriage is built on love. You need to love your spouse all the days of your life. You need to love her. You know, uh, next year, me and my wife shall be married 50 years. And I'm not saying after 50 years, that everything's been perfect. You have your ups and downs, not far as marriage, but ups and downs. You go through life itself. You know, sometimes you, you need bills paid and sometimes you have, you've been attacked in your body, whatever. You, you go through those times. But after 50 years, close to 50 years next year, be because what, what, what keeps you together? Love. Love never talks about divorce. Love doesn't do that. Love bleeds the best of everything. And when I met her, I met her on March the 30th, 1974, at 9 o'clock, Leveth and, Leveth and Sharon Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, at 9 o'clock. And uh, so we met. And then um, when I met her, uh, it's, just, uh, it's just amazing. It was supernatural because I was lonely. I needed a companion, and, and yet God knew who I needed that would fulfill the will of God for my life. I never dreamed at that time I would one day be a pastor. Uh, I knew I had a call, but I did not know what it was. I did not know what it was. And, and so I met her and uh, went on the, the third date with her, and, and I took her home, and, and uh as I was sitting in the car, I I, uh, I I I would have these feelings, and I'm, you know, you don't want to fall in love with someone and they don't love you. That's miserable. 
And I knew that you may say, well, that's just too quick to fall in love. I'll tell you what, I was falling off the cliff. I mean, I was falling in love with her, and I knew this was supernatural. And so I sat there, we sat side by side in the car, and I said, uh, I need to say something. And, and I, I believe in just being straight out. I said, I said uh, Charlotte, I said, I'm, I, I, I feel like I'm falling. I know this is fact, but I just feel... I feel like I'm falling in love with you, and um, and and I, I want to know how you feel. If you feel is if you feel the same way I'm feeling right now, I said we'll continue. But if you don't feel the way I feel right now, I would rather just say this would be the last day. Goodbye. I don't want to continue because because everything has got to be built on love, you know, love. And you know, she said I, I feel the same way you do, and we continue. And thank God, be married next year, be 50 years. And, and so we're at my family is blessed. But everything is based on love. Everything in your life, marriage, dating, is based on love. And, you know, if you're going to get a, a mate or you believe in God for a husband or a wife, find the right fishing place. Don't go out in the world and try to seek for those that's not serving God. No. But always put God first place. Whom he leads, he feeds. Whom he guides, he will provide. You know, uh, Psalms 139, th Psalm 31, 139 and verse 23, it says, Search me, O Lord. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me, know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in, in the way of everlasting. Lead me the right way. If there is a first love, then there's a second love, a third love. Don't let God be your fourth love, fifth love. No, you put him first place. You know, what number is God in your life? In my life, he's number one. Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37, I've quoted this. Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. You're not supposed to love, husband, you're not supposed to love your wife more than God. I know uh, we people make these statements. You know, I love my wife with all of my heart. I don't. Then don't misunderstand me. I do love her. If I love her with all of my heart, where does God come in? No, I love God with all of my heart. Now, I love her as far as in the natural on this earth. I love her with all of my heart here. But God must be number one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And 1 John uh, chapter 2 and verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Think about it. If you love the world more than you love God, mm, the love of the Father is not in you. For for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. Love not the world. Neither the thing that's in the world. Do not love the world or what the world can offer. When everyone loves the world, when anyone loves the world, there is no love for the Father. People love when you love the world, you get into the lust of the flesh, selfishness, anything to satisfy the flesh. When you love the world, all you think about is things to please you, things to make you feel good, things to make you look good, things to prosper you. Love not the world. Everything that you have, all things that you have right now, your husband, your wife, your children, your house, your job, money you make, the good money you make, all the things that you have, you think you got it made. But you know what? 
God gave you those things. God gave you that mate. God gave you that job. Put him first place with your substance, with your heart. Don't have the lust of the eyes. People get into the world, have lust of the eyes, adultery, idol worship. The pride of life, fame, position, love for money, love for things, exalting oneself, power to dominate. See, the devil walks about seeking whom he may devour. He wants you to get so involved in the world. He wants to get so involved in your goals. It, it, it's, not about, it's not about me. It's about him who saved me. Everything that I am, as Galatians 2.20 says, it's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth in me. Now, the things that you ultimately try to keep, you'll lose. God should be number one in your life. Second Timothy, the third chapter, verse four. In the last days, perilous times shall come. There will be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Let me say that again. There will be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And a lot of people right now, they say they're Christians, but they love the world more than they do God. How do you know that? Well, I'll tell you what. People never go to church. That to me, they don't love God like they should have. Now, don't be offended with what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm truthful with you. You need that home place. The safest place to be on this earth during this time is in the will of God. That's the safest place for me to be in the will of God. Satan works outside in and God works inside out. Sin will keep you from God, and God will keep you from sin. The question is, does God, the question is, is not, does God love me? That's not the question. I know he does. But the real question is, do I love him? The Bible says, he that loveth me, he it is that keeps my commandments. You love God not by words only, but you love God by action Amen. To deny yourself is to disregard your flesh. You have to keep God number one in your life. And I tell you what, it's a day to walk with God. The, the devil will give you all kinds. The devil will even get, bless you in some areas that get you away from God. You know, some people can't have money. Example, what if, what if you go to church, you're faithful, and, and, and you're not really totally sold out to God. You're not sincere, but you, you say you're, you're serving God. And all at once, you, you, uh, you get a, a, a million dollars placed into your lap. What would you do with a million dollars? Oh, I'll tell you what I'll do. First thing I'm going to do is buy me a yacht. I'm going to go out and see the world. I'm going to buy me a big house. I'm going to do I hold it. No. What would I do? I would say, God, this is your money. What do you mean? Well, first of all, I tithe on it, give offerings. And me personally, I would be trying to find other people I can bless. God gives seed to the sower. He didn't say he gives seed to the Christians. He gives seed to the sower. Be a giver. That's what love would do. Be a giver. Deny yourself is to dis disregard your flesh, your own desires, and your own will. As Jesus says, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. God's will be done in your life. It's not what I want, what I desire, what I will, but what God wants, what he desires, and his will for my life. The best place you can be on this earth during these perilous times is to be in the will of God. Where there is a, when there is a conversion, there is a change of direction. When there's a true born-again experience, there's a change in your heart, a change of direction, a change of heart. Your desire changes, your goals changes, your thoughts changes, your whole life changes when you give God. See, God wants you to give him your heart. That means 
Submit yourself to God. Say, God, I want to be in that place where it's no longer I that liveth, but you that live inside of me. If God can get the money through you, he'll get it to you. God is not looking for golden vessels. God is not looking for silver vessels. He's looking for yielded vessels. Not golden vessels, yielded, not golden vessels or silver vessels. He's looking at yielded vessels. Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled, they shall be satisfied. Satisfaction only comes in his in being in his will. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let your foremost goal in your life be to know and to love God with all your heart. Let that be your foremost goal. Many years ago, I had a, uh, involved in the church, many years ago, 20 some years ago, if not longer. The church that I pastored, we had a, we had a, I call it a jubilee offering. And, and what, what we were going to do is have people donate stuff to give to God. Well, no matter what they have. Give it to God and, and we'll sell it and put all the funds into the ministry. That was many years ago. I had, one, I had this one guy, his name was Jim. He had a Harley David, uh, Davis uh, motorcycle. And, and that Harley Davidson, it, that was his, he loved that thing. Well, when we had that Jubilee offering, guess what he's going to give? He's going to donate that thing that he loved to give it to God. And everybody got excited. Some people gave this, gave that, and he gave his, his best, best thing he had. And, and, and so uh, I was in office one day, and, and I was praying, and I just didn't feel right about that. I did not feel right about him doing that. I don't know why I had a check in my heart. I don't feel right about him doing that. So I called his house. And of course, he's at work. I talked to his wife. I said, I didn't talk to you about something. I said, uh, I, I know your husband is, is giving that early Davis uh, motorcycle to, to the church. She said, yeah. She said, boy, he, he, he loved that thing, but, but he loved God. He, he wants to give it to God. He will put God first place in his life. I said, well, you know what? I really believe in my heart. I can accept it. I don't think he needs to give it. And, and the Lord gave me a why. Why? Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice. Remember, he went to Isaac and said, me and the lad going yonder, we're going to come back. But that's a whole message within itself. And he laid Isaac on the altar. He's going to slay him. And, and God stopped him and said, no, don't do that. There's a ram caught in a thicket. And so God didn't sacrifice Isaac. But as far as God's concerned, he did. He saw Abraham's heart. I said, you tell Jim that I said, as far as God is concerned, he donated that motorcycle to the church. Well, make a long story short, I found out later that he came home. And, and his wife said, I said, what did he say? Uh, well, he, uh, when I told him that, he went home and he cried. He said, Lord, I, I know you love me. I know you love me. And it just really blessed him. See, the most important thing in your life don't let it own you. Don't let it be your God. There's times in my life I've given things away to prove to the devil that I'm not bound by things. Be a giver 
A heart after God gives to God. You know, the other day I had I had a hundred dollar bill in my wallet there, and, and and I felt like, well, I'm supposed to give that to somebody. I had it in my back, and uh, one week went by, two weeks went by. I would, I just figured, well, okay, the day will come that I will bless somebody with it. And then, sure enough, I was at a restaurant, and, and a lady came up, and first time she waited on us, and she waited on us and began to talk to her. And I said, hey. Uh, you live in the area? No, I, I live in Newton. I live in Newton. I said, you drive all the way down here every day, back and forth, back and forth. And, she's a, and, and then when she walked off with a, with an order, I, I heard the voices. She's the one. She's the one. I said, that's, that's the one I'm supposed to give the $100 to. What a tip, you know. And, and so she came back before the night was over. I said, ma'am, I said, I'm all, I said, uh, I said, I, I won't give you $100. I said, now, this is, uh, I don't usually do this. Usually we always tip 20%. That's what we usually do sometimes more. I don't usually tip 100 But I said, I felt like I had this in my wallet. I felt like the Lord would give it to somebody. I said, I want to bless you with this. And boy, I tell you what, that just made her night. It made my night more than her night because the Bible says more blessed to give than receive. And because when, when you get blessed, the first thing you think about, Lord, what am I supposed to do with this? What should I do with this? You be, be, I'm not bragging on me. I'm telling you, love is to give. I, I, there have been a few times I found out it was somebody's birthday. And, and, and I, oh, did I, wait, oh, today's your birthday. And I, I had a 20. Here, happy birthday. Did I know them? No, the, the waiter. But you know what? People don't know how much you love them until you show them how much you care. People are looking for someone that will love them, not just words, but in actions. That's why if you are a Christian, and I'm talking to my family now, the church family, if you're a Christian, you go to a restaurant, you don't tell, please don't tell them what church you go to. I don't let them know you attend Livingwood Church because our people are tithers and givers. They give, but so don't be. See, one of the things that when you don't love God, you'll get greedy. You'll get stingy. But when you love God, you are called trees of righteousness. Now, hold it. The Bible says we're called trees of righteousness. We all, the Bible also says that we are the branches. Jesus says, I'm the tree. You're the branch. A tree gives life. And the Bible also says that we're called trees of righteousness. A tree gives life. A branch receives life. So you got to be a good receiver and be a good giver. Well, I don't know. This message, I guess, is talking about giving. But to have a heart after God, God so loved the world that he gave his best. God so loved the world that he gave his best. Some of you need to get back on your track in giving. And give him back to God because he's blessed you. And you shall put God first place in your marriage. Put God first place in your life. Put God first place in your marriage, your goals, your dreams. Whatever you do, put God first place in your dreams. And what do we do? Keep him number one. And I guarantee you, I'll continue in my next message coming up. This is part two. My next one will be part three. God bless you. Remember. You are the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. You cannot be defeated. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for joining us at Living Word Church. Living Word Church McDonough is located at 185 Tunis Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. In-person services are held Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Children's services are available every service for ages birth through 12 years old. If you would like to financially support this ministry, you can do so by using the Give Now button on our website at livingwordchurch.faith or by texting the word GIVE and the amount to 770-212-9591. Your financial donation will help us continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. To find out more about Living Word Church, check out our website at livingwordchurch.faith. Thank you again for watching. See you next week.